The title for this blog is The Tide Always Comes Back. The Tide Always Comes Back. And while that sounds encouraging, uh, turn with me to Ecclesiastes, the first chapter. And uh, as some of you know, I, uh, uh, I may not start with the, all the happy news, but I will end with that which is the Lord, and we will find His heart and be with Him. And that's, that's our desire. But Ecclesiastes 1, uh, verse 2, 3, and then verse 9. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? And then verse 9, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Well, like I said, that's pretty discouraging, so let me read that from another translation. Maybe this will cheer you up with this new translation. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. So, you know, let's face it. Anyone, any one of you, have you ever faced you know, depression or fear or sadness or hopelessness or loneliness um, and had, um, you know, a thought that there is no hope for the future uh, and just brings depression and stuff like that and there's no hope for change or, or things getting better or something worthwhile coming down the pike. Um, it's like you're in this dark tunnel and then one day finally you, you look down at the end of the tunnel and you see a light coming and you go, oh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, only to find out it's a train and you're stuck in the tunnel and can't get out. Um, you know, there seems to be times when we go through that. And uh, so I want to talk about a little bit about past and present and future. Uh, and I want to talk about our relationship to those things um, and where we tend to draw from and where we should draw from when, when these kind of things are happening. Um, so I have a little saying here, the past is history, the future is a mystery, the present is where it's at. I wrote the last line to that. <laughs> the past is history, the future is a mystery, we don't know. So the present has to be where it's at, because this is where we're at. Um, so, with the past, or the present, or the future, where, where do we find any hope? And we find it in the fact that the tide always comes back. God made it that way. God made where the tide always back. Alright, so we want to explore that. First let's talk a little bit about the past. <clears throat> the, the fallacy of the past is that uh, living or looking to the past as your measure of how you should be right now. That's a fallacy and a lot of people do that. In fact, Ecclesiastes 7 verse 10, so let's look at that. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 10. This is a different translation again. Do not say, why were the old days better than these? For it is not wise to ask such questions. It is not wise. Okay, well, why is it not wise? Because your measure is Christ. That's why it's not wise. And, and if your measure at any given moment isn't Christ, guess what? you're going to experience depression and let's say, sadness and helplessness and hopelessness and loneliness. You're going to experience that because your measure is something else. You're thinking it should be better or this or, you know, whatever. And you're, you're, you're putting the wrong measure on it. And the scripture said, you know, do not say, where were the old days, um, why were the old days better than these? For it is not wise to ask such questions. All right, let's talk a little bit about the present then. <clears throat> Um, 
drying up in the present. Drying up in the present. Um, are we depressed in the present? Are we drying up, becoming purposeless in the present? Uh, are we dying something that will give life um, in the present? And, um, you know, what can you do in the present? What, what, what do we do right now when we have that kind of stuff going on? And, you know, well, another scripture from Ecclesiastes, okay? And that is Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 1. <clears throat> Cast thy bread upon the waters. Okay. I didn't read the rest of it because I'll address that in just a moment. But what we get from this is that you have bread. You do. He says, cast it on the wall. You have bread. You may think you're hungry and you don't have anything, but the Lord is faithful. I'm telling you, He's a better Lord and a better husband, better father than that. You have bread. So we have to we have to start with recognizing that we're not on our own, that we are with Him, that we, he, he is our measure, and He is our life, and He is everything that we are meant to draw from, is Jesus, is the Lamb of God. Um, so I just wrote this little sentence here, if you feed them, talking about people, if you feed them when they are desperate, one day when you are famished and desperate, some will, someone will show up with bread and save your life. Cast your bread. Cast your bread. All right, let's talk about the future. And by talking about the future, we can add the rest of that verse. But let's just, let me just read a statement here then. We can't see the future, but we look at it as if the problems or the things we have uh, or the things we have or lack today will be our future. In other words, that whatever we're going through right now, that's going to be our future. Well, we, don't, we can't predict that. We don't know that. But we, we can get depressed um, because we say, well, what's in the present is my future. And if right now I'm depressed or if right now things are going bad or whatever or seem hopeless or lifeless or whatever, then that's going to be my future. Well, that's, you know, I'm sorry. Clearly, that is not trusting Jesus. And one of, the, one of the most basic things taught in Christianity, forget anything deeper, trust God. You know, lean not to your own understanding. I mean, see, those scriptures are not difficult to, to interpret. <clears throat> so the rest of that verse in Ecclesiastes 11, 1, the, the, the rest of the verse is, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Um, so why cast your bread upon the water? I mean, okay, so as most of you know, my, my weird mind. I mean, my first thought is, you know, if you cast bread on the water, uh, do you really want it to come back? It's kind of soggy and da-da-da-da. Or, or, or if you cast your bread upon the water and it goes out, fish are going to eat it or something, you know, uh, Solomon's a lot more wise than that. He's talking spiritually about certain things. For thou shalt find it after many days. So why cast your bread upon the waters? Because, okay, let's see. Jesus did it. Uh, let's see. It, because it's, it's his nature and he lives in us. Um, it's the way of the cross. Giving, pouring out, sacrificing thinking not about our condition, <laughs> but, but about others, and, and, and about the Lord. Because, you know, we may be faithless, and then we say, well, I was faithless, and I didn't help anybody. But how does that touch the heart of the Lord, too? Because that faith is supposed to be in Him. And so... You know, I mean, we're, we're all seeking the heart of the Lord, and, you know, we want to satisfy Him. So, I, I wrote this statement, statement, Stop seeking to gain, lose for God and others. And, 
And, and when I wrote it down, and it was just a little while ago that I wrote it down, it was stop constantly seeking to gain, even if it's, well, I'm lonely and I'm, de I'm um, uh, depressed or I'm sad or, I, you know, so you're trying to gain something. When he says, cast your bread upon the waters and it's going to come back to you. See, any time we stay focused on ourselves and not on Jesus and not on on going after him and loving him and knowing him and saying, I give up everything for you. We all say that. But it has to be not just our words and not just our heart at the moment when we're in a religious setting, but when you're in the prison or you're in the lion's den or you're in the, you know, the tomb or, you know, those, those sorts of situations. So, um, uh, there's a, uh, another verse that will help us along this line, and it's actually the next verse, Hebrews 11, verse 2. Um, and it gives us another reason for casting our bread upon the waters. <clears throat> so the scripture says, Cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. That's verse 1. Verse 2 that follows this, and is along with it, says, Give portions to seven, yes, Yea, to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon you. All right. So let's take on the you do not know what disasters might come upon you first. Folks, there are things ahead of us um, in our future, and we don't know what they are. I don't know what they are. You don't know what they are. And it's not always disasters. But it is things that we need to be prepared for. We need to have, for example, if someone was really down and really needed the Lord and we're not up, we're only half up or something, you know, we're flying our flag at half mass, you know, or something, um, then they don't get what they need. And then we feel depressed more because we, you know, we didn't, you know, we weren't prepared uh, and remember, the preparation of this is talking about right now. Cast your bread now. Okay, So, um, casting bread is a form of preparing or storing up. Okay. I, I, I'm intentionally using that word and emphasizing it. Storing up something, uh, for you shall find it after many days. Um, it is uh, for when you are weak. And when you need bread, because we all know this doctrinally and somewhat spiritually, but we need one another. And, um, uh, and but, but we can't just depend on one another. We have to depend on flowing with His Spirit. That we, I heard you all talking about and praying and stuff, and I heard something about a tide pulling us back to Jesus. Uh, what's the name of this? The tide always comes back, and this is the true for Jesus too. If we're, if we're, see, with Jesus, it's not what you put in; it's what you put out, not to self, but to God and others, that causes that tide to pull you always back in to the Lord or to the, to the things that you need. Um, so, uh, you know, there is this reality that we. We put in, we give in, um, and then we see results rather than making it always about somebody give in to me. See, and that can't be the case. So I wrote this sentence, uh, Our hope is not in what's coming or even in what we have now, but in what we do now. Cast your bread upon the water. See, not... See, we go, well, I don't have anything now. I'm not spiritual. I'm not, I don't, I don't have, I haven't been in the Word. I, you know, all this stuff. It's not about what you have now. It's what you do now. And guess what? The Lord said, you have bread. <laughs> or he wouldn't tell you to do that. He'd say, well, you know what? I have bread for just, so go, go to your tent and just, just have a pity party. That's what he'd say, but he's not saying that. So, the good news is the tide always comes back. Um, 
let me address a little bit of um, our concept of storing up and I'm trying to watch the time a little bit so I'm going to read some of this here. <clears throat> uh, being prepared for the future to us means to have extra resources on hand, store up money, save something for a rainy day, uh, hold back from giving so you'll be taken care of. Uh, the same with food or resources. But here's the problem. Hoarding is not God's way. It's not his method of, of storing up. See? What's so funny is his method of storing up is you don't need a storage building. <laughs> I just loved it. Sorry. Um, so how do we? How can we store up for the future needs without holding things back? Jesus on the cross never held back, but he gave all to his own loss. You see, so it always comes back to Christ crucified, and it always comes back to the selflessness of Jesus that's seen there. All right. So. Um, I'm going to read a verse. Uh, if, if you're, if you have your Bible and you've been flipping through, save your place in Ecclesiastes because we have one more part in that. But, in, uh, and I read the scripture, so if you don't, I, don't worry about it. First Corinthians fifteen thirty six says, "Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die." He's saying, you know, it doesn't matter what you have, that does not produce just in having it. So it's, a, it's one of those, let it go and let it die. <laughs> it's, it's the cross, but it's not, it's not ripping us off. It's not God being mean and making us live without. It is moving with him in his spirit to bless others and just watch him take care of us while we take care of the things that are his. Um, so, you know, bread won't do you any good unless it's released and um, seed won't do you any good unless it's planted and money won't do you any good unless it's used. Bread, if you store it up for too long, it'll get moldy. Uh, you know, it'll get moldy. Um, Jesus turned water into wine, but but the Lord showed me for this session for us that we can do something really special. We can turn old bread into living seeds. Cast your old bread, cast that, whatever you got on the water, and it'll come back living seeds. Yeah, and it'll go in living seeds if you do it in the right spirit. See, you go, Jesus turned water into wine. Well, you can do something like that by casting your bread upon the waters, and when it comes back, somebody says, so-and-so turned bread into living seeds. I just like that when the Holy Spirit spoke that to me. So I wrote, instead of hoarding, baptize everything into the waters of death. Cast it into the waters. Cast it into the waters of death. Baptize it. Don't just throw it in water. Baptize it. Take it down with Jesus into his death. Take that down in there and let him bring it back and it'll come back to you. He, he'll take care of it. But, you know, let it go. Don't hold back. Don't be, you know, storing up the way humans store up. But store up the way God says. Here's the way to get the storehouse. Cast it upon the waters. <clears throat> so, um, back to Ecclesiastes 11. And verse 2. Um, I really, I, I, when we read this a little while ago, I emphasized the part that says, For you do not know what disaster may come upon you. This time I want to emphasize the first part. <clears throat> Give portions to seven, yea, to eight, for you do not know what disasters may come upon you. <clears throat> so, I wrote, don't, don't just give once or twice, but seven or even eight times. And we're not just talking about money here. I hope you all know that. We're talking about selfless giving by the nature of Christ. That, we're talking about giving something more costly and more precious and more valuable than money. We're talking about by the nature of Christ pouring out. So, make sure you understand that because I don't preach about money. <clears throat> um, don't just do one thing, but do seven or eight. 
you know, if you if you if you had stocks and stuff like that, you wouldn't put it in one company, everything in one company. If that thing failed, you'd lose everything. You put it in seven or eight or whatever. You 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 know, I don't have stocks or whatever, but but I would know that you put it in different things, you know. And then spiritually, shouldn't we do that anyway? And then that sort of makes sense. Um, we should cast a lot of bread into the mouths and lives of others. Um, okay, I'm going to finish, the, finish this up. My little subtitle for the wrap-up here is called Giving Bread, comma, Sowing Seed, dash, dash, We Need You. We have bread, valuable, life-giving bread. Uh, there's a place where you can give. So I'm just going to read what I wrote. Jump in and help out with Friends of Life in the Spirit or fire ministry websites. Don't just eat bread from it, but cast bread into it, and it will come back to you. Write something to be put on her website or mine. Find mistakes. Be an editor. Go read everything on there and mark down every mistake you find and then contact, you know, some of the friends of Life in the Spirit or Kelly or somebody that can correct those things instead of us leaving them on there for years because we don't catch everything. Uh, pray over certain pages poems, songs, thoughts, but do, as, do it as part of the website team. Don't just, you know, I mean, I know you pray. I know you pray, and I, I appreciate it. But instead of just being an individual out there, join Friends of Life in the Spirit and, and tell us, I prayed over this poem, and then when one of us around here hears feedback, we can tell you, Guess what? Your prayers were answered. People are being affected by that. And they weren't before, but your prayers have, have touched their lives. Um, uh, give towards new equipment. Come up with creative ideas and suggest them. Some can type up things. They're good typists. Uh, anyone can transcribe some are good on computers. Um, if you don't know any area, then at least ask if you can help. Just say, I'd like to help. What can I do? Because you may not, off the cuff, even know. Well, how, would I, how would I function in that way? Um, just ask. I mean, and it, there may not be that immediate need, but when it comes up, we, know, we will know who, whose heart is they're, and they're wanting to not just, you know, I'm going to say it like this, they're, not, they're wanting to not just sit at home in depression and loneliness, they're wanting to cast bread, and, and so I'm sharing this and preaching this, but I'm also trying to give an avenue for it, and I'm not just doing it selfishly, I'm, I feel that, that there are some of you, it's in your heart to function as what the website people that, that work on uh, life in the Spirit call themselves friends of life in the Spirit. Um, we need you. Lift the burdens of those who are already laboring and become part of the team. So then I wrote this. What lies behind us and what lies before us are small matters compared to what lies within us. And that's Jesus. That's Him. Don't be afraid. Just trust that the tide always comes back. <laughs> Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we just bless you. We love you. Lord, we are together. We, when we gather together in these blogs, we're so one and we have the same heart and spirit. And there's no question of that. But Father, I know that there are some that either either you 
you have spoken to them in some manner and this bears witness in their heart. I know there's others who may be depressed, feeling not, feeling useless and whatever, and that you had me bring this up for their sake. And Lord, so that they could, uh, in relationship to life in the Spirit at least, become friends of, of life in the Spirit ministry team that is trying to get as much bread as we can and get it out there to people. So Lord, bless bless the hearts uh, that feel your call to them so that they can um, get break more out of the things that pull them down and be caught in that tide that brings them closer to you, Jesus. Thank you for this time together, Lord. Bless the Bless this sharing afterwards here, Lord, and bless Nisi when uh, as she's already arrived and that uh, she'll get a good refreshing time while she's here. We love you, Lord, so much. In Jesus' name.